وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Peace and the blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I bear witness that there is no God worthy of our worship except Allah, the creator, the sustainer, the provider, the cherisher, the one who created us to worship him and to, de to declare his oneness. I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah and he is the best of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless our gathering, Allahumma ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those people who will remember him. So Allah will remember them in the best of the groups. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the benefit from this session, Allahumma ameen. And of course, I'm welcoming all the brothers and sisters who joined our session. And it's it became something, you know, so special and so, so great uh, uh, to have the Tuesday and I can tell you, if I have a Tuesday and we didn't go for a lecture, that, that I, I feel that I'm missing something. So that Tuesday became part of our life, became part of our schedule. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, as we gather always for his sake to gather us in Jannah, Allahumma ameen, ya Rabbil alameen. Let me welcome our Imams, Imam Jalal Abdul Wahid and Imam Yahya. Uh, and inshallah, Rabbil Alameen, we have a great topic to deal with. So, but let me, inshallah, give the chance for the Imams to welcome the community members. Assalamu alaikum, Imam Jalal Abdul Wahid. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my brother. May Allah bless you, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen, and bless this beautiful and wonderful gathering. Inshallah, Rabbil Alameen, may Allah bless everyone, inshallah, and have the benefit of this beautiful meeting, inshallah. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. Jazakum Allah khairan, Shaykhana. Uh, Shaykh Muhammad, Imam Muhammad Yahya, Imam Masjid, Salam in the Nidan. Salam alaykum, Imam Muhammad. Alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakum Allah khairan. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us be steadfast on this religion and to help us do the best in our life, inshallah. Ameen. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. And let's, inshallah, because of the time, let's go directly and dive to uh, to our topic, let's go swiftly to know what is the topic exactly. I gave you the the, gener the generic advice or generic uh, title that we are going to talk about the advice of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it was a little bit tricky because when we talk about the advice of or amazing advice from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's so wide, that's so vast because we are talking about a special chapter in Islam, it is called the Wasai al-Rasul, the advice of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad to his ummah. And, but we have only one hadith, inshallah, that we are going to share with each and every one tonight. And this hadith is narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. And as we know, alhamdulillah, most of you, you guys already know that Sayyidina Abu Hurairah is the most is one of the most famous narrators of the hadith of Rasulullah. And actually, he was the first one, the top on the list, that he narrated the most of the hadith of Rasulullah. And his name is Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhrin al Dusi. And Sayyiduna Abu Huraira or Sayyiduna Abdul Rahman narrated this hadith, and this hadith mentioned in. Sahih Muslim, so it is authentic hadith. And, and the issue here, it has lots of benefits to know the grade of the hadith itself. So you will take that hadith as a rule of thumb, and also you will take it with comfort and you will try to apply this hadith without any hesitation or any doubt. And one of the things also that we need to know about this hadith, it's one of many of the ahadith that Rasulullah had mentioned, and it is under this title, the advice of the Prophet Muhammad What is this hadith about? Sayyidina Abu Raira narrated that Rasulullah one day said to the congregation, said to the companions, should I tell you 
Ala ukhbirukum. Should I tell you? Should I inform you? Should I, you know, direct you? Ala ma yamhu Allahu bihi al-khataya for the things that Allah will forgive the sins and by by which these deeds Allah will forgive the sins and will elevate the ranks they said of course O messenger of Allah we want to know what actions that because of it Allah will forgive our sins and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will elevate our ranks on the day of judgment so the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave the first instruction the first advice and the first teaching i will not say it but i will let imam jalal to tell us what is the first action in this hadith that will cause for our sins to be forgiven and also will our ranks our levels will be elevated inshallah yes imam jalal أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله حمدا طيبا مباركا يرضيك يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نحمدك ونستغفرك يا أرحم الراحمين My dear respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome again to this beautiful and wonderful meeting on Tuesday and it's become الحمد لله رب العالمين like our Imam Ahmed Ali said and our Imam Muhammad Yahya it become really very important Alhamdulillah Rabbil Amin because of you and because of, of our Imams may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it in, in your deed and may Allah accept your good deed inshallah Rabbil Alameen the first one here and, and this is from the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who always encourage us and advise us for the sake of Allah for the Muslim Ummah you know, in order to elevate our status. And this is according to the purification. So he said, peace and blessing be upon him. So this is meaning that performing the wudu, you know, all the time, all the time. Subhanallah al -Azim. What does that mean, my dear respected uh, brothers and sisters? It's meaning, you know, that Allah Azza wa Jal in Surah Al-Ma'idah, he, he taught us, taught the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he taught us, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, oh who you believers. Are you believers? Yes, oh Allah, we are believers. So Allah Azza wa Jal gives us the order, always after, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, oh who you believe, or who you, oh, oh who you believers, Allah gives us an order right away. This order today is about how to pure, how to purification how to, to make wudu to ourselves. So, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Ameen, how to wash our hand, and this is the first thing against, against coronavirus, is to wash your hand all the time, wash your, wash your nose, wash your face, this is against coronavirus. So, Alhamdulillah, since 1500 years, until now, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Ameen, we have the medicine here, from Allah Azza wa Jal in the Quran. So after that, what happened, my dear respected brothers and sisters? It is two parts of this wudu. Wudu is two parts. The first part is to be clean from outside. To be clean when you, when you, when you try to make salam to your brother and sisters. To, to be clean or to looking good, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. You know, according to the Prophet of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was so clean. And he teach us how to be clean. So to be clean, to wash your hands, to wash your body, alhamdulillah, rabbil ameen, make wudu in order to do what? Related to do what? Related to do the salah. Re related direct to do the salah. I'm not going to talk about the salah because this is, I believe, the part of my brother, uh, Ahmed uh, Ali. Otherwise, he will he will not put me again at, at this. At this. <laughs> what do you think, Sheikh? <laughs> <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, Allah man. You can go ahead, mashallah. I, I, I am your I'm your student and, and oh, you are Allah, mashallah. You, you teach us, my oh my brother. Wallahi. May Allah bless you. I mean Arabil Ameen. So this is you know direct always, direct always us to, to do the salah and to be with the to be closing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, very close to Allah Azza wa Jal. 
But here is the point, my dear respected brothers and sisters, because I didn't want to take a lot of time. When we wash our hands, you know, we will not harm our brothers or sisters with our hands. When we make wudu, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, when we, when we wash our mouth and our tongue, we will not bite backbite to, to each other. We're going to be pure. Purification is not only purification from outside, you know, but it's also from inside. We actually make purification to our hearts, to our soul. You know, we will not talk about each other. We will not buy backbiting to, to each other, you know, or, or upon each other. We will not harm each other. We will not cursing. We will not lie. You know, we will not say, we will not oppressing each other. This is the main thing or the main thing of how to be purification, how to do the wudu in order to introduce ourselves to, to the salah. Your respected brothers and sisters, you know, Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said something amazing. In the night of the Isra and Mi'raj, he said to our, to, 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 to our beloved Bilal ibn Rabah, may Allah be pleased with him, great companion. He said to him that he heard his slipper wear in the Jannah, inside the Jannah. Allahu Akbar, ya akhi. How come? So he said to him, what you did? He said to him, O Prophet of Allah, by Allah, I didn't do nothing except for if I lost my wudu for some reason or another, what happened? He direct to go and again do his wudu. Again, redo the wudu. Then after that, he said to himself, you know, oh Abu Huraira, how come, you know, if you do the wudu, if you do the wudu, why you didn't make two rak'ah, you know, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Only how many times, subhanallah al-azim, say four times, meaning eight rak'ah, direct him to the Jannah, direct him that, that, the, the, that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa he heard his, you know, slipper in the Jannah. I'm going to, inshallah, end about, uh, about this, my dear respected brothers and sisters, and saying, even, subhanallah al when some, someone died, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and give you long age, inshallah, and you do it for the sake of Allah, and you encourage each other and all Muslim ummah to do the goodness, inshallah, rabbil alameen, even when someone died, you know, after we wash his body, what we do? We make him, we make him add wudu also the wudu that is so important very important may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you my dear respected brothers and sisters ameen ya rabbil alameen jazakumullahu khayran assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh back to you my brother barakallahu feekum jazakumullahu khayran and here is the first the first part the first point that imam jalal may allah bless him that he illustrated this point and he declared the first action will cause for your sins to be forgiven and your levels will be elevated in Jannah. Number one is to perform wudu properly. And this is what Rasulullah had mentioned. Before we listen to Imam Yahya, because I wanted to take in consideration the great desire of Rasulullah to teach his Sahaba. And number two, the, the Sahaba, they were so eager to learn from Rasulullah and to apply, to comprehend, then to put that into forth. And number three, the great advice from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for us, whenever we learn, we should convey the message. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, said, convey out of me even one verse. What is the type or what's the action number two? will cause for our sins to be forgiven and will cause for our levels and our iman and our status to be elevated on the day of judgment. This is what Imam Yahya is going to tell us, inshallah. Yes, Imam, we are listening to you. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Rasulillah, Muhammad ibn Abdullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. رَبِّ شْرَحْ لِي صَدِرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَحْلُ لَعُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِي يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِي The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the best of teachers. You know that the profession, professional teacher usually gives you the whole curriculum and then they try to give you some tricks 
to help you pass the exam. This is exactly what the Prophet ﷺ did with us. He told us about everything that makes us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the pillars of Islam, the pillars of Iman, how to pray and how to make siyam and how to pay zakah and how to go and make hajj. Oh, you know, all the, the types of khayr and all the types of good deeds. And then he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, every once in a while, he was uh, uh, taking advantage of any chance to help the companions and, of course, to help us all and to free us from the torture of the hellfire. He tried, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, always to give us a lot of advice how to gain a lot of hasanat and a lot of rewards in return of small or little actions. Here, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he says, أَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى مَا يَمْحُ اللَّهُ بِهِ الْخَطَايَ وَيَرْفَعُ بِهِ الدَّرَجَاتِ Now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, and by the way, nobody asked him for advice and nobody request anything from the Prophet. Just all of a sudden, he is, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, very keen to to help the companions and to give them something that will benefit them in this life and in the hereafter. And when I say the companions, I'm just uh, uh, in terms of the time itself, but all the advi advice that come from the Prophet Muhammad, it is for all of us. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the first one is to make wudu properly, as Sheikh Jalal uh, uh, said and explained. May Allah, be, uh, uh, may Allah bless, bless our brother Sheikh Jalal, Allahumma Ameen. And number two, the second advice in this hadith, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَكَثْرَةُ الْخُطَى إِلَى الْمَسَاجِدِ So the number two advice is the thing that will, that will get you free from the torture of the hellfire, that will cause your sins to be forgiven right away, is walking frequently and repeatedly to the masjid. Why? In order to pray, in order to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is so smart. He says walking repeatedly, frequently, because we have, as Muslims, we have five times a day to pray at masjid. And of course, in case you can't make it to the masjid for, for a certain reason, still we should pray it. So, وَكَثْرَةُ الْخُطَى إِلَى الْمَسَاجِدِ and another hadith supports this meaning when he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he tells us that every morning on all of your bones and all of your joints, there is a due charity, a charity due. You have to pay it for Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala as a kind of showing gratitude to Allah for all of these joints and all of these blessings, how we move our fingers, how we, how we could hold things and how we could walk and how we could do things so we should you know react positively to Allah and thank him subhanahu wa ta'ala he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the other hadith something that supports the same meaning he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa bi kulli khutwatin tamshiha ila salati sadaqa that every step you take towards masjid to pray will be considered as sadaqa charity as if you paid money for the sake of Allah. Because sadaqah is a very wide concept. It's not just to pay money, it's to pay some of your uh, knowledge, to let people know about Allah, to teach them. It's to pay some of your health. I mean, to help other people. So all types of sadaqah is to give from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given you. All of these things that you do for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so generous that he, will write it down for you as a kind of charity that will uh, fill up your scale with hasanat inshallah on the day of judgment. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he is around the companions, he is trying to bring peace and comfort to their hearts. And he is trying to give them something that will help them and will benefit them. He says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith. And look, actually, if you think about salah, all of us know that as salah is the, the biggest and the best and the number one pillar in our religion. 
And the first question that we will be asked on the day of judgment when we get back to Allah is about our prayer. If the answer is good, and if we are doing good with our prayers, then everything after that, inshallah, will be easy. Allah will facilitate it for you. So the Prophet wasallam tells us, and if you look about uh, if you look at all the process from the very beginning, once you start to make wudu all the way to the end of your salah, you will find with every station a glad tidings from the Prophet He tells Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that with the last drop of water you use, and when you get done with wudu and say a certain dhikr remembrance, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala will forgive all of your sins. When you go to the masjid. On your way to the masjid, walking to the masjid, and by the way, walking in this hadith, it does not necessarily be walking on foot. It could be also that the scholar said that when you drive to the masjid, because you know here in the country, masjid is is most likely to be so far from us that that's why we can't walk to the masjid. So when you drive to the masjid, still, inshallah, you are, you keep the same rewards because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the most generous. On your way to the masjid, you know, with every step, your sins will be forgiven. Your rank will be elevated in paradise, inshallah. When you get to the masjid, between adhan and, iq and iqamah, I'm trying to make it short. Between adhan and iqamah, your dua is, is mustajab. Whatever you ask Allah for, Allah will answer. In your prayer itself, when you make sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet tells that the, the, the most closest position to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when you are making sujood. You are most likely to be responded and to be uh, uh, given what you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. So it's all about the prayer. During the prayer, before and after the prayer, everything is, is, is having barakah and having uh, a forgiveness and we are granted mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, just to emphasize this point, he says sallallahu alayhi wa in this hadith, وَكَثْرَةُ الْخُطَى إِلَى الْمَسَاجِدِ And uh, walking frequently or repeatedly to the masjid is a, a thing that you will have all your sins forgiven, inshallah, because of it. So walking, driving, running, whatever the way you want to go to, go to the masjid uh, uh, with, still, inshallah, you are gaining the same rewards because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous. So uh, 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 take advantage and, may, and, and try to make the most of any advice, whenever you find the Prophet وسلم, starts his hadith by saying, Ala adullukum? should I tell you about something? Now the Sahaba is all ears. They are trying to listen because they are getting a gift from the Prophet All types of khayran and kullu abwab al khayr ma'luma. أما أن يعطيك النبي صل أن يعطيك النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم جائزة. It's like a shortcut to paradise. You know the way to paradise is to go this way. Okay, we will get there and 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 so and so. But when you get a shortcut to paradise, we could call it shortcut like something that you do gives you a lot of rewards in return of very little actions, or it, to do it on a regular basis. There's also one thing we understand from this hadith, which is kathratul khutah, frequently, uh, repeatedly, doing it on a regular basis, inshallah. We ask Allah to give us the barakah of this majlis and also to, to, to help us do all things that cause all of our sins to be forgiven, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Barakallahu feekum, Shaykh Hanami, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bless you, ameen, ya rabbil alameen. And this is the second action that Imam Muhammad had declared and to walk repeatedly and frequently to the masjid, the, the, that thing, that action will make your sins be forgiven and also it will raise your status. And when we talk here about raf'ud darajat, to raise your status, not only in the hereafter, but by the way, the scholars had mentioned that raising the status of somebody, that also will be included his status in the dunya. Because actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he loves somebody for his actions, for his deeds and his great desire to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is going to raise your status in dunya as well. Actually, you, will, you might have a person that people loves him, 
uh, people love him and and you wonder why people are loving that person and he had almost nothing he is so poor and and he, he does not have a fancy car he does not have a high position in society in terms of nowadays positions but subhanallah allah had granted him the love of people and that is something allah had caused his status to be elevated in dunya as well and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will cause for that person to live in the life of dignity the life of integrity the life of respect why because allah had raised his status in dunya and that is only for a short time in the dunya but in reality that will be in the here in the hereafter permanent permanent permanently so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here in this uh, or rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam here in this hadith giving us the third action what's the third action imam jalal may allah bless him had said number one is to perform wudu properly imam yahya said walking frequently to the masajid and number three that i'm going to share with you inshallah wantigharu salati ba'da salah waiting the salah eagerly after the salah is over means what when you wait and i'm talking here to the mashallah to the group those who are waiting in the masjid after maghrib for example waiting for isha salah and what happens that time period that you are thinking when you are finishing salah and you are about to wait for another salah that time period is not a wasted time it's not the time that you are wasting sometimes we are in ramadan for example and after maghrib salah and sometimes after isha people want to jump directly to salat tarawih we want to finish imam wait if you are if you about to know the virtues of this duration this time this period of time waiting salah or waiting the next salah after the salah is over and you are waiting for another salah or the next salah that time in between let me tell you four four great rewards number one as the hadith has mentioned your sins will be forgiven that's number one and number two, Allah will raise and will elevate your ranks on the day of judgment. And number three, during that time, the angels will make dua for you. Allahu Akbar. Could you imagine during that time, if you are waiting between Maghrib and Isha, for example, and nothing will prevent you from going back to your family except that you are waiting for salah you are waiting to pray isha you are waiting to perform your salah and then you will go nothing and the hadith is saying la yamna'uhu ay yanqalib ila ahlihi illa salah nothing would prevent him from going back to his family except the salah itself so during that time the angels will make dua for you what the angels will say and they will say as rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the other hadith allahumma ighfir lah allahumma arham they will say oh allah forgive his sins oh allah have mercy upon him so during that time you might have the imam you know had given a lecture and you are waiting for 10 minutes 8 minutes sometimes 15 minutes you are waiting for that time to get salatul isha all that time you have angels are making dua for you and they will say oh allah forgive him oh allah have mercy upon him that's number 3 number 4 that time the waiting period that you have between salah it will be counted in your record as if you was in a status of salah 
all that time that you are waiting, it will be counted. It will be in your record as if, as if you was in your salah. So you will get lots of good deeds in your records on the day of judgment, inshallah. So let me summarize the hadith of Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa When he said, didn't I tell you about the deeds that it will cause for your sins to be forgiven and will for, for your ranks will to be elevated, for your levels and your status to be taken up. And num number one, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Sahaba said, yes, O Messenger of Allah, please tell us what, what to do. So he said, number one, performing wudu properly. And number two, walking frequently to the masajid. Number three, waiting salah after, waiting salah after the salah is over. That time, that time will be considered as if you will be in your salah. And this is, it has lots of virtues, lots of good deeds, lots of rewards in our records, inshallah, on the day of judgment. So we need to apply. We need, you know, to put that into action. So we meet Rasulullah on the day of judgment and we say, oh messenger of Allah, we are part of your ummah. We have listened to your advice and we got your teachings. Then we applied and now we are with you in Jannah, oh messenger of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless that gathering. Allahumma ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakum Allah khairan. Each and everyone for joining our session. MashaAllah, I can see more than 35 people. MashaAllah. And even those who are on, on Facebook. MashaAllah. And that's, that's, a, that's something great. So we can gather together for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless each and every one, Allahumma ameen. If I started to mention the, the names for saying the dua, you know, that will take us even after Isha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but inshallah, be sure that our Imam, Imam Jalal, inshallah, is going to include each and every one in his dua, inshallah, Rabbil Alameen. And Allah knows the best. Allah knows, you know, how much we, we are, you know, having the desire and the great desire for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah shower all of us with his mercy. Allahumma ameen. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Jazakum Allahu khairan. Barakallahu fikum. And let's move to the dua. And we have our, our brother, Brother Muhizzuddin, as mashallah, is asking, inshallah, Imam Jalal for your dua. Brother Sharik Iqbal. And mashallah, uh, Auntie Maryam is here. Mashallah, welcome. Long time without seeing her. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her. Allah You can see Brother Muhammad for those also is here. Brother Sharik, Dr. Siddiqui, and of course, Dr. Rahim, Sister Ruby Alam. And mashallah, all the names and, and Sister Aisha, Brother Khadr Hassan. Mashallah, long time, brother. We are missing you so much. Uh, and of course, Brother Izzuddin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. Brother Fazl Hadi, Sister Fifi, MashaAllah, all the all the, the brothers and sisters. And I can see Naji also, Brother Naji. I think MashaAllah, he is a newcomer to the session. So uh, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Our number is going you know, to, to be more and more. I can see MashaAllah also my wife, you know, I have to thank her on her, the wife, she will give me a ticket. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, <laughs> forgive us, Allahumma ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. So let's go to our Imam, Imam Jalal. We are here about your dua and want to listen to your dua, inshallah. Jazakum Allahu khayyaman. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wal aqibatu lil muttaqeen, wa la udwana illa ala zalimeen. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي النبي الأمي الهادي المصطفى الأمين اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت 
وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت اللهم ارض عنا اللهم بارك لنا اللهم انصرنا اللهم اكرمنا اللهم اهدنا اللهم ارزقنا اللهم اشف صدورنا اللهم يا رب الطف بنا اللهم اغفر لنا اللهم اصلح احوالنا اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم فرج الكروب واغفر الذنوب واستر العيوب اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا اجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم أصلح أحوالنا اللهم كلنا ولا تكن علينا أكرمنا يا رب بالقرآن اجعلنا يا رب من الذين يحفظون كتابك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا وجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم وحد الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعل بفضلك كلمة الحق والدين اللهم يا ربنا يا من يحب من دعاه يا من لا يخيب من رجاه ندعوك ونرجوك وأنت الله أنت الواحد الأحد أنت الفرد الصمد أن تغفر لنا ذنوبنا وأن لا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة يا أرحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وزد وبارك وأنعم على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما شاء الله تبارك الله جزاك الله خيرا شيخنا الله bless you and may Allah accept your dua and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower all of us with his mercy Jazakumullah khairan, brothers and sisters, for joining us. May Allah bless you always. Jazakumullah khairan, Imam Muhammad Yahya, for sharing the time and, you know, sharing the knowledge with us. May Allah Amen. give us... Thank you. Jazakumullah. Jazakumullah khairan, Imam Jalal, uh, for... Jazakumullah khairan, my, my, my dear respected brother, Imam, Imam Muhammad Yahya, and Imam Ahmad Ali, and everyone here. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your good deed and make it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amin, Rabbi. Amin ya Rabbi. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.